Hello friends, this video on Mineral Nutrition Part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now the nutrients which we will be discussing about in this lesson. Like as I said, we will talk about each of the element, mineral elements separately. Like nitrogen, phosphorus. So we will talk about each of them. We will see from where do the plants get them. What can happen to a plant if it is deficient in that particular mineral and what is the role of that mineral in a plant. So we will talk about nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, sulfur, iron, manganese, zinc, copper, boron, molybdenum, chlorine. So we will talk about all of these uh, minerals in detail one by one. Now I have not segregated them as macro or micronutrients because I have already defined that in the previous slides. So you all know which is a macronutrient and which is a micronutrient now. So most of the first ones are macro. So nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, they are macronutrients. In fact, they are primary macronutrient. When you talk about calcium, magnesium, sulfur, they are also macronutrient, but they are secondary macronutrient. When you talk about iron, manganese, zinc, copper, boron, molybdenum, chlorine, they are all micronutrients. So let us start the discussion with nitrogen. So for each of these minerals, we will talk about three things. What is their role in a plant's life? What is the source of this mineral for a plant and what can happen to a plant if it is deficient in this particular mineral. So these are the three things which we will discuss for each of these minerals. So let us now talk about the first element which is a macronutrient and is needed in quite a large amount by any plant. So let's start with nitrogen. So we'll first talk about the role of nitrogen in a plant. It is a major constituent of proteins, vitamins, enzymes, hormones and chlorophyll. So when I talk about uh, proteins, the basic unit of proteins, proteins are made up of amino acids. And what are amino acids? Those with an amine group. So amino acids are nothing but those with an amine group that is with an NH2 group. So there you can see that N is present. So nitrogen is a constituent of proteins. And needless to say that proteins are present everywhere inside our body. The in, not only our body, even inside a plant body, proteins are present. So proteins, vitamins, enzymes, hormones and chlorophyll. So these are some of the things which are present throughout a plant's body and everywhere the composition has nitrogen in it. So here you can look at some of the structures. The first structure represents a protein which is a quite complex structure which has amino acids so hence has nitrogen. You talk about uh, the vitamins or the enzymes or the chlorophyll. So everywhere you can see the role of nitrogen. So nitrogen is an important constituent of so many important molecules which are present inside a plant. It helps in rapid growth and that is why it is a macronutrient. If nitrogen is not there, the plants would not grow. And not growing would actually mean that the plant life cycle would, will not be completed. Directly involved in metabolism. When I say metabolism, I am talking about the metabolic act processes which are involved in the synthesis and transfer of energy. Because energy is something which is required and desired by each and every living organism. So it has a direct role to play in the metabolism taking place inside a plant's body. When you talk about the source of nitrogen, that is how do plants get nitrogen? One is through fertilizer. So fertilizer application because the consumption of nitrogen by a plant is huge. So the plants take in all the nitrogen which is present in the soil and therefore the soil becomes deficit with nitrogen. So somebody needs to again enrich the soil with nitrogen. And how is that done? That is done by the application of fertilizer. So fertilizer which is rich in nitrogen should be applied to the soil. Another source is air and that happens through legumes. What is What are legumes? Now, legumes are the plants like uh, peas, beans, so they are all known as leguminous plants. Now, in these plants, in their root, 
nodules are formed that is spherical structures are formed in their nodules and there are present the rhizobium bacteria so they help in fixing nitrogen so they fix the atmospheric nitrogen in the atmosphere nitrogen is present in the form of dinitrogen gas that is n2 gas now they convert that nitrogen and they fix it into the soil in a form which can be utilized by the plants so that is how nitrogen can be used up from the air with the help of these leguminous plants so nitrogen is because nitrogen is present is in large amounts in the atmosphere now how these legumes convert the nitrogen atmospheric nitrogen into a usable form that we will see when we talk about nitrogen fixation towards the end of this lesson so the nitrogen is absorbed from the soil in the form of uh, a nitrate ion that is no3 minus so nitro nitrogen can be absorbed in the form of nitrate ion which is no3 minus or it can also be absorbed in the form of ammonium ion that is nh4 plus so these are the two forms in which nitrogen can be absorbed from the soil by a plant deficiency what can happen if the plant doesn't have enough nitrogen stunted growth because nitrogen plays a primary role in the growth of the plant so the growth will be reduced yellowing of leaves these are some of the symptoms that by looking at the plant only you can say that okay it is deficient in some mineral so for nitrogen the deficiency symptom would be the leaves will start to become yellow so i mean this picture is like a little exaggerated form it is not that the entire plant will turn yellow but yeah gradually it can if if nitrogen is not made available in any form then gradually the entire plant can even turn yellow but when it starts like some of the leaves will start become yellowish in color excess nitrogen can delay flowering and fruiting so this is another important thing now it is not only that nitrogen will always be deficient now if too much of nitrogen is present in a plant even that is not right that can also have adverse effect on the plant so each and every mineral should be present in the right amount it should neither be deficient nor should it be in excess so if nitrogen is present in excess that can delay flowering and fruiting now flowers and fruits they are nothing but the they have are the reproductive structures of a plant so if they are delayed that means the process of reproduction itself is delayed now if the process of reproduction is delayed too much then that is again a major concern because in that case this plant might be growing old that is fine but new plants are not getting formed so that would become a concern if there is no flowering or fruiting let us look at the next element that is phosphorus role of phosphorus it is a major constituent of nucleic acids some proteins and cell membranes so here they are also present in nucleic acids so if you look at uh, the structures like this if you talk about the cell membrane the plasma membrane what is the basic structure of a plasma membrane it is made up of it is a lipid bilayer structure so two layers of lipids this is one layer this is another layer so what type of lipid is this this is nothing but phospholipid so the lipids have a phosphate group attached to it so phosphorus is present in the cell membrane again when you talk about the nucleic uh, acid the whether you talk about dna or rna there you have the phosphate linkages the phosphate group is present so phosphorus is present there also again in some proteins also phosphorus are present so they are also constituent of so many important biomolecules they also help in rapid root growth and maturation in plants so phosphorus also helps in the rapid root growth and maturation in plants so that the plants become mature on time so in other words we can say that phosphorus plays a role in the formation of reproductive structures in a plant directly involved in the flower and fruit formation as i said so that the flower and fruit formation happens at the right time in the right way source of phosphorus is fertilizer again orthophosphates in rocks and soil now phosphorus does not enter the atmosphere of the earth so it remains on land rock and soil minerals 
so in nature they it occurs as phosphate or which is often known as orthophosphate so it is absorbed in the form of phosphate ion so this is the form in which it is absorbed so it is found in rock and i mean orthophosphate is the most abundant form of phosphorus and it is mostly found in rocks and minerals deficiency of phosphorus can cause retarded root growth because its function is to cause root growth so if it is not there there will be less root growth also there will be retarded maturity so the maturity will not happen at the right time poor yield of fruits and flowers because as i said it helps in the formation of fruit and flowers so the formation of flu fruits and flowers will get impacted due to its deficiency talking about uh, the symptoms the or the deficiency symptoms there will be purple or dark green stems and leaves so here in this picture you can actually see that some purplish tint on the leaves so the leaves which are green in color as such they tend to become even darker so the color becomes very dark green and on those dark green leaves some purple shade try start appearing so if this was the leaf before but once it becomes deficient in phosphorus gradually it tends to become darker in color and also purple color develops on the leaves now when the deficiency increases even more the purple color start to become more strong thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again